Hello my beautiful, wonderful people, I'm Ash and welcome back to another monthly Seraph of the End chapter review. Woo, yay! So, what are we on? What are we on now? Oh my god, I, I just, ugh, the, the words, they just escape my brain most of the time. Um, a 121. We're at 121. Yes, indeed. I'm trying not to move my hands around too much. Usually I'm very, I gesture a lot with my hands, I'm very vocal with my hands, but it's really hard to do when you're just recording audio and you're not like presenting it uh, in person because uh, I keep knocking like my cables and then you just keep hearing like the muffled sound of a knock and it's really annoying in audio so I try really hard not to um not to do that excuse me but um yeah it's you know it's it's hard but it's also like sometimes I just do it and I'm not paying attention then I hear it on the playback and it's right in the middle of when I'm talking so I can't really like edit it out and that's really annoying so yeah, sorry about that. I know it happens, but I try really hard not to move my hands enough that it keeps bumping the mic, I guess. But uh, it should be fine. Unless, of course, the bumping is from something else and I just don't even know about it. And I'll discover it when I have to listen back to this audio, which is always fun. But other than that, let's go straight into the chapter because this one is, there's not a lot that really happens in it. So I don't think I'm going to have a lot to say on it, but uh, it's a beautiful chapter uh, and I'm just really really excited to read it again uh, because now ever since moving to Japan I um I read these chapters when I wake up because I can't I used to read them they used to come out at roughly like 2 a.m Australian time and I used to work night shifts so it used to be great I used to stay up and then read the chapter and then go to bed and you know it was, it was a nice feeling I get to read it at the same time as everyone else but now I can't stay up till like 2 a.m or midnight so I have to get up at like 7 a.m to go to work so yeah I uh I, I have to wake up like hours after everyone's already had their initial hype and then that's when I get to have my um my moment and I usually just read it and go oh that's nice and then I get up and go to work which is you know it's sad but uh, that's what it is anyway uh, let's get into it so we have this really beautiful first panel is this the first one yes oh god it's gonna give me the notice okay yeah so this really nice panel of a place somewhere near uh, Mount Fuji, I believe, um, that people have already, like, made the comparisons between. I don't know the name of the place. Sorry, I don't live near Mount Fuji. <laughs> uh, but I love this. Look, you's driving. You is driving in this panel. Oh, my God. Our boy. Oh, Mika, th you trusted him enough to drive. That's so sweet. Their relationship. They're making leaps and bounds. I love it. It's a secret. Oh, they're so cute. I love the way they're just driving on what seems to be like barely a road or like a road that's really grassed over, which I guess makes sense. Most of the roads would be very, cr like when the tar cracks, the um, grass, uh, we weeds, mostly weeds can grow up out of it. That's why there's like the thing where like when concrete cracks and no one, no one's around to like fix it, then the weeds grow into it. Anyway, why am I overanalyzing this panel? Anyway, <laughs> look forward to it. I am looking forward to it. Literally, it's looming right in front of us. I figure out a stupid obvious. Oh, I love this panel. What a nice lead up to it. Like this whole page panel. It's so nice. So chapter 121, Last Dawn. Oh my god. Let me tell you, I don't like a name like that. I don't like the implications of a name like that. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Don't like that. No thanks. But this is a very nice picture of Mount Fuji. Very nice. Like, I wonder if they went on scene to like take photos of this like how far in advance they agree with the editor on what the stories are going to be um and how far in advance they go like seeking photos and stuff for it so i'm thinking maybe they they probably maybe don't go as much on scene but depending on how far ahead they can go on trips because it's not like uh mangaka don't really have time to go on like trips like this you would probably just have to look up photos and then go from there like you don't really have the kind of time when you your time is so limited when you're creating like a weekly or a monthly series because you really have to spend all of your time fucking drawing those panels especially for someone like Yamamoto that works alone as far as we're aware like there there is a storyboard artist on Seraph but as far as we're aware there are no assistants and assistants are really what a mangaka needs because they do a lot of the dirty work or the filling in of like the screen tones and stuff uh, so that's really what you need so that you can focus on the impact of like your line art and stuff uh, but as far as I'm aware Yamamoto does it all by themselves so that's kind of garbage like you imagine can you imagine drawing 40 pages in a month and you have to screen tone them all as well I I make I don't make manga I, I make 
I make comics and I've screen termed comics before. Uh, and let me tell you, I could not do 40 pages in a month. I've done 17 pages in a month before. And that was like pushing myself while also making sure that the characters were half animal or something so that they, I wouldn't need to draw clothes as much. But let me tell you, it's it's in, it's a bit. It's intense. That's the word I wanted. Intense. Anyway, let, let, let's move on. It's huge. Oh, that's so cute. I wonder if it's like his first time seeing Mount Fuji like that. Because like, why, why, where else would he have had the time to go? Like Mika, yeah. He's clearly not so inside voice. <laughs> wow. I love that. Yeah, Mika's clearly seen so much shit. He's been like overseas, man. He's, he's a weathered boy. But like, damn. They say it's the biggest in Japan. Okay, so first we had Tokyo Tower facts and now we have Mount Fuji facts. Is this because Japan recently opened up to foreigners since basically the Tokyo Tower chapter came out? So like, they're like, shit, we gotta plug that all for our foreign audience watching, uh, reading our manga. We gotta plug that shit real hard so that we make sure that they take a trip to Mount Fuji and they go to Tokyo Tower, even though everybody knows Tokyo Tower and Mount Fuji. Like people don't go to Japan and don't know Tokyo Tower and Mount Fuji. <laughs> it's just, anyway, it's funny. Like, obviously it's not, but yeah, it's a funny coincidence. <laughs> oh god we can't afford to draw attention to ourselves <laughs> what is with you climbing high places yeah you know what it's good good question Mika I'm glad you're asking it I like the way you used to just like I see a tall building and I just gotta climb it it's like that scene from How to Train Your Dragon where he's like you know what I'm like dad I see a dragon and I just gotta I just gotta kill it that's you but he's with climbing places it's like come on Mika you know I just see a mountain and I gotta fucking climb it you don't understand this is why they wouldn't let me out of Shibuya <laughs> it's just great imagine you gets in trouble because he kept climbing the wall of Shib uh, Shibuya the, the the big wall in the um the, the I don't know whatever the thing they built to protect the city and he just keeps climbing it and everyone's like god damn it you get off the fucking wall Bravo Yakia, get off the goddamn wall I love it Oh my god. Do you know about the big sea of trees at the foot of Mount Fuji? Oh my god, not gonna lie, when I read this, I was like, oh god, they're not, they're not going, they're not going there, are they? And it's just it's supposed to be a good hiding place. There is that. Not, neither of them have mentioned the name of this place. It's like, okay, alright. Yeah, it's fucking massive. There's just a huge forest, dense forest there. Um, <laughs> probably, coincidentally, rather magnetic fields there are wacky. Yeah. I mean, we all know what they're talking about. Um, I'm not going to say its name, but the fucking, the sea of trees, the goddamn forest at the foot of Mount Fuji. And then stuff weird, goes weird with spells. For oh, so it affects magic as well? That's kind of interesting. So we, the, the, um, Kagami hasn't really bothered to explain much about magic um, uh, in this universe, other than people have the... Um, aptitude for it and can cast spells and shit but like magic has really been a thing they haven't really discussed as much which you don't really need to when it's less important because you have magical aptitude you can wield a demon weapon bam that's it that's all you need to know um and it's good that he doesn't waste time explaining it when there are important way more important things we need to know but interesting that he's like bringing it up now and he's just like it's like a, a throwaway comment but it's an interesting thing i think so like the magnetic field that is supposed to affect, um, <laughs> thanks phone for that battery warning, uh, the magnetic field that, um, is supposed to affect the, um, it's like supposed to affect communications in the forest, and that's one of the things that, ooh, makes it so spooky, but, uh, it really depends, because I think it's based on spots, and, like, the magnetic field, not so much, it's really just, like, you're out of range of cell towers and shit, like, uh, I'm like, uh, I, people really talk it up a lot, but it's, I don't think it's that bad, but you know, whatever. Um, except for the obvious, the obvious things, which we're not talking about. I was never that good with spells. Well, at least he admits it. Well, hiding in the forest sounds good. Yep. Absolutely. Go, little lads. Oh, I love their little camping spot. Oh, where are they? Like the first base of Mount Fuji or something like that? I don't know, but it's cute. Look at that. It's clearly reference from a photo when they've got like the half cut out kanji in it. And that's really cute. I like that. Mika's just like, hang on a minute. <laughs> please, please, can we quiet? Look at him. He is so excited to climb that mountain. Just let him up there. <laughs> Who would want to climb it now? I just, oh God, Mika, the, the amount of sweat drops he has on his face. My God, I feel like his, his whole like 
face is just gonna melt off because he's just like sweating so much from everything you does. Oh man, okay. Why not make some last memories? Ugh. Oh my god, don't say last battle. Don't say last memories. Don't say any of this. These words are banned, mister. You're not allowed to say them. Why do I? Oh, I just, oh my god. See, Mika's just like, oh, oh. Oh, his fluff got so big. <laughs> oh, look at, oh, that just, that makes me sad. Exactly, oh. The impact just a simple O can have in a story. Oof, man. Bring some snacks. Yeah, I mean, you guys did rob and kill a bunch of people to get their snacks. You should at least have the common courtesy to eat them. Like, a lion doesn't leave their prey. They eat it all. Like, come on, man. Come on, get on top of it. Oh, you is like trying so hard. It's just, wow. I love, I love the outline of the kanji here. Like, you can tell that they've done, like, the outline of the kanji on the boxes. But then this one is, it just, it says Soy Boy, which is a really popular brand of, like, energy bars here. And they're, like, they're, like, made out of soy and shit, right? And it's just so funny because it's in English, so it's really easy to tell what it is just from the outline. Whereas the others are just blocks of kanji. That's so funny. I love that. Okay, okay. I love I just love the little the little slap the little hand slap. You guys, God. They're so funny. I love them. Ooh, rocks. I love I love me some rocks. Look at those rocks. Let's get some appreciation for those rocks, fellas. I love it. Oh my lord, he's snacking! You're not really supposed to like eat while you're walking like that. Oh he's got energy jelly! Look at that, he's got right right next to the, the soy boy. <laughs> That's great, I love that. Mika still looks super unimpressed though. Oh, I love the way they're just climbing. I love the way Mika is climbing too, despite the fact we all know he doesn't have to. But he is. Oh, baby. I love this panel though. Look at them. The just the distant blobby shapes. I love that so much. Oh my god, look at Mika's smile. Ah, that makes me so sad. I love him so much. Oh. Oh, they reached the top. The Summit Sengen Shrine. Ooh. Who do you pray to at this one? God, probably. Which one? Oh, Mika, I love you. <laughs> He's so sassy. But also, good point. No clue, but I know it's not the first. I just, I just love imagining him to, like, just be like, yeah, fuck you first. Yeah, fuck you royally. I hope all your plans go to shit. Amen. <laughs> oh, there's an idea. Let's pray to the first enemies. I love that. That's so great. Oh, my God. Wait, if they're the first enemies... Doth they not be praying to themselves? <laughs> That's pretty funny. I love it, though. He just casually jumps on top of it. I love it. That was easy. <laughs> Shouting down. Are you sure jumping up on that isn't sacrilegious? I, <laughs> we've already been hit with all kinds of divine punishment. You know what? He's got a point here. I, I, I really have to agree with you. I really don't think at this point there's any reason for either of them to really give a flying fuck about anything religious. That's like you, I guess. Always optimistic. He absolutely is. We're about to start the fight to save the world. Ah! I just... Ah! Oh my god. These boys, they're about to cause some trouble. They're about to talk shit and get hit. God or angel or devil or whoever you are. Even you. <laughs> He's just like... Mm -hmm. oh, uh -huh. Just the biggest shrug with these hands out like... Mm -hmm. I love it. We're gonna do this, but good. Optimism. We love to see it, you. We can't get any more cursed than we already are. I kind of like that that's their vibe right now. They're just like, we're fucked. He's fucked. I'm fucked. We're both fucked. The world's fucked. How about we just get more fucked? I like that. It's to the point. It's good. Oh, I, I, they up there together. Oh, this battle is so good. Look at them. Look at their tiny little smiles. <laughs> you, you is like the embodiment of that that one emoji where it's like <laughs> like, the, like the little devil emoji i love it it's great oh but this is so cute I, I just love the differences in how they're drawn like mika has such fine lashes that only the outlines of his are drawn to show how like light they are and noticeable but yours is just very blocked in and his eyes are a lot more like colored whereas mika's aren't like his his pupils blend in a bit more to his eyes it's nice Oh, look at that. That's so cute. They have a little... Oh, wait. Let's get the whole... 
Okay, we can't get the whole panel on the show to jump at, but you know, look at that. Isn't that nice? That's a really nice view. That's a really nice panel. Like, if you opened that up in the book, like, you were reading the the Shonen Square um, for the first time. Oh, Jump Square, sorry. But yeah, and then you just opened up to this pa- double page and, ah, oh man, I love spread panels. I think they're so good. Like, they're used so well in manga, too. Like, oh, it's great. I get to see you happy after all. Oh, can you guys... It's just I'm, I feel bad I'm interrupting their date. Like, I feel like I'm watching something I'm not supposed to, you know? It's scandalous. It's like, but they're on a date. Should I really be here? <laughs> oh, If we gotta live, might as well have fun. Oh, he's so optimistic. I love it. Yep, I'm gonna save the world by having fun. Oh, it's so good. Until I get to see my first dawn, too. What do you mean, your first dawn? Why you make it sound like you've never had a dawn before, you? Could you be any more depressing? You're kidding. Oh, but look, they're they're chatting and they're having fun. Oh my god, that's so cute. Oh, the, the fact that they clearly stayed up there way too long. Like, Mika, no problem. He can just turn off his senses, right? But you is like, all right, it's fine. It's fine. His burning desire from Mikaela Yakuya keeps him warm inside. Amen. Okay. I'm glad we all agree on this. Oh, this is really nice too. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Oh, look at them. Got the scratchy style. Like, we, we're used to seeing it in Mika's furry cape thing, but like seeing it like that to show like the, um, the light passing through everything is so nice. I love Yu's hair. Look at that. He looks fucking feral and I love it so much. <laughs> I'll never forget the scenery. Oh. Oh, I love the way Mika's like, I'm going to say something really dramatic, like it truly is our last night together, my love. And then Yu's just like, it's fine, we're going to win, don't worry about it. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so, I have so much fun, we'll completely forget all about the bad stuff we went through. Trauma? Forget about it, Mika. <laughs> we ain't got no fucking trauma. You're going to have so much fun, you're not going to know what the word trauma means. <laughs> okay, you. Okay. <laughs> oh. I love the way it's, like, you can tell when Beaker isn't, like, super into it. Like, he doesn't super believe in it. He's still very unsure. But he just wants to go along with what you're saying because you are so goddamn, like, contagious with his optimism. Like, he's shown it time and again that he can really turn people's minds around. Like, he can really make people stop and think about it. And it's like, oh, sorry, I hit my bin. Ow. Um, <laughs> lost my lost my train of thought because I whacked my bin. Ow. But yeah, it's, uh, you can really still tell it, like, de- like we really just don't know where this is going to go with these two, because, like, obviously Mika's going to support you in everything he does, he's already agreed to do that, basically, but there's also the whole aspect of, like, he still wants to die, so I feel like it depends on the opportunities and, like, how they're going to fight the first, when the Seraphs are going to show up again, or, like, how that's involved. Is Kagami even going to bother to explain it? Because if this is truly the last dawn, and we're really heading into the main fight here... We don't really have time left for exposition or, like, flashbacks or any shit like that. Like, for example, sorry, my mouth is sorry. For example, um, like, right now as well, Blue Exorcist, the series Blue Exorcist, that's also published in Jump Square, is also going into its, it's in its final battle already, basically. Like, it seems pretty goddamn obvious that Blue Exorcist right now is in its final battle and the the chapter's right now. So it's a bit a step ahead of where Seraph is right now, if they truly are going into the final battle in Seraph. But it's like, yeah, like every chapter is about the battle, the fight they're having. There's no room for anything else. We're just swapping back and forth between the characters, where they are in the scenes, how they're fighting Big Bad Dad Man. But like, as for Seraph, it's like everyone's still all over the place and not everyone is like linked together or like fighting together sort of thing, which it's a bit all Blue Exorcist. So like, this is very... There's still a lot, like, there's still a few directions that Kagami can take this in. Um, or if he's already, it sounds like he might already have his sights set on, like, one complete destination. And he's probably just not going to explain some things about the series. Which is a shame, but, like, w- I think we could all agree that we kind of knew this was going to happen just because of the kind of storyteller that Kagami is. And the way he tells the story. Like, I think he introduces a lot of very interesting things, but he also kind of drops some of them because he doesn't think he can fit them into the story anymore. But once again, this is speculation, of course. Um, And also, it's not necessarily all of his fault too, because 
Uh, I know I mentioned this a lot, but it's important to remember that for Japanese manga, especially published manga that are published in these big volumes like Jump Square, which is fucking shown and jump, that editors have a lot of say in what goes on in these series. So what decisions we're actually seeing, how much is Kagami's and how much is the editor told him to do that, or he fucking, his series gets axed. Like, you know, it's like, mm, it's, it's not pretty, but you know, um, it has a long history of it. But anyway, I digress. I've mentioned this before, but still. So it's like, I don't really know the direction they're kind of going to go in. Are they really going to start having a big bad fight? Are they going to have random shit in the middle of the big bad fight because Kagami wants it? Or the editor wants it? I don't know. And I guess we only, we can only really speculate at this point because the, the manga updates so slowly that we just don't know. But anyway, um, uh, let's move on. Anyway, both of us are going to do this. Oh, look at him doing the job. Oh, even Mika has his hand lazily in the air like that. I'm sorry. That's great. Amazing. All right, we're back in Shibuya. Capital of the Japanese Imperial Demon Army. My god, those guys. Oh, it's Kai Luke, that guy whose name I forgot for like 20 minutes in a previous episode. True fans remember. <laughs> oh, man. Look at this. It's just like, we have no interest in you, but we might kill a few more. Oh, I love that. That's great. Oh. We did the, he did one of the building crashes. It's been a while since we've had a building crash, lads. For every one human who resists, a thousand of you die. Can you really afford to- I guess they don't really care. They, they know it's like the final battle kind of thing. They don't really care about their food source that much anymore. You can always breed more humans, right? That's the Shikama um, Doji uh, motto. The Shikama motto, motto. The Shikama merge. What the hell? Anyway. Am I understood? Yes, sir. I love that. That's funny. Less card doing absolutely nothing once again. I'm glad we we finally got to see what these guys are doing, though, because I have been wondering what the fuck they were doing while they were transporting the first somewhere, and I guess to Shibuya, which, to be completely honest, Shibuya is not very far away from Ikebukuro, so uh, if Gurren really is still in Ikebukuro, or they haven't already started to pursue you who's gone west to Mount Fuji, then they could go back down to Shibuya and then meet up with these guys and then all of them head out to wherever the hell you is. Um, oh, he's on Mount Fuji right now, so, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I love this because look, it's, it's Eyebrows and Tiger Man. They're back finally. I like the way we got an update though. Like clearly they're in like uh, magic containing shackles, I assume, so that they can't cast magic or shit. But it's like, it's nice to see them again. And I like the way that they're just being gloomy little bitches in a cell. Like, yes, kings, gloomy little bitches. You guys have been asleep for like fucking years at this point. And it's just nice to see them just years in terms of how the story progresses. Like, we all know that this is the longest day that mankind has ever seen. And it's just, well, it's not anymore, I guess, because you and you and Mika saw the sunrise and shit. So the day is officially over. Oh my God, guys, we moved on. We've got a new day now. It's dawn of the final day. God, Maturus Mask really was right all along. Anyway, I'm losing my mind. This looks really bad. Oh my God, they're talking. Oh my God, Shinya, I missed you so much. What a king. <laughs> Oh, need to find a way to contact Gurren. I like the way Gurren is like, ugh, shut up. I'm thinking, oh my God, he did the ash thing. The ash, I'm sorry, uh, that made that sound like me. I don't, I don't say shut up. I'm thinking to everyone. I meant the Final Fantasy 12 ash thing. Anyway, uh, ooh, okay. Summoning seal. Ooh. Oh, here's this hottie. Look at this random character. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. I like them. 10 out of 10. That's my OC now. I'm stealing. Them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Defensive sigil. Defensive for what? What do you need to defend against? When we're researching, the one we're fighting as a research subject is a god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were just saying fuck the god. The uh, just before in Mount Fuji. Could you hear him? <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So those are humans. So they're the Hakia sect. So they're working together at this point, which kind of makes sense. I guess Saito was really involved in them. So like, it makes sense that. You know, they're working together now. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love Saito's energy in this picture. Can we just appreciate his energy? Can we also just appreciate the way he's basically a black blob, but there's just the tiniest little bits of highlights so you know exactly where his hands are. Well, like, you know where one of his hands are, but, like, you know exactly the form of his body from it. And it's just really cool. And also, I just really love how, like, Shikamaru's just fucked up down there. That's great. Oh, my God. I really hope we go more into that real soon because I just... I want to know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, why are they... What are they doing? This is important. 
important. This is important and I want to know more about it. It's important. But also I do very much love Mika and you, so you know, I just... <laughs> but you know, I've got my two hands together. Please, 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 I want more of all. <laughs> Back in the Sea of Trees, which we are, once again, not saying the name of. It's just the Sea of Trees. <laughs> I just... Oh my god. It's just amazing. I just love how Mika is there. Oh my god. And and you he looks so like content. I love it. Oh that's great. Okay. So somehow the the seal is gonna make him be able to access Shikama's memories. I will discover what you want to protect. Ah Oh my god, and then destroy it. Oh my god. Oh my it's great. Ah that's so good. It's just ah so he's going into Shikama's memories, and Mika's going into Yu's memories, and it's just so great, because it's like, bro, together, like, what, oh, like, oh, I just, I, like, I'm reminded of that time where Mahiru could see Mika in Yu's memory, so, like, can, will they be able to, like, interact or, like, do things in their memories? Because they're both gonna end up at the same point in time, they're gonna end up back in ancient Greece, or, like, further back, no, basically ancient Greece, they're going back to ancient Greece, because that's where, um... Saito is from, and that's where, um, Yu's, d like, deepest memories are from, so, like, I feel like it makes sense to go back there. We're going back to the pods, and back to the, the dead little angel <laughs> in his little casket. Oh my god. I really hope this happens next chapter and we don't, like, swap back to fucking Gurren and the gang and shit. Like, come on, man. Just give us this and this. Give us it. Give me it. Give me my sandwich. I've put the effort into making it. Now I want to eat it. Give me the sandwich. Let's go to the past. Oh my god. The restraint I need to not make a Kolioko joke here. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> it's good. It's great. Oh, I'm just really excited. It was really nice that we had like this somewhat more chill chapter. And then we had like the stuff with um Saito and Rigor and stuff. But then like, it's like, oh, it's, it's not, oh, it's, I just, my brain, my brain is short circuiting. I'm just really excited and I really hope we do get into that ancient Egypt past finally. Because we all have fucking questions about the past and we all have so many questions about Shikama because he's an elusive little bitch and we just need to slap him around a bit to get some answers. And I really hope they slap him around a bit and get those answers because I want those answers too. Please, once again, my sandwich, I would like it please on a platter or on a sandwich plate. I don't know. Uh, sandwich plates a thing? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap it up here. We're at the end, basically. I did end up rambling more than usual. I should really just say, I should just never say that this is going to be a short review, because I feel like that's just inaccurate, and it's just not going to happen. But anyway, uh, as always, thank you for watching, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's get excited for January's chapter. Until then, take care of yourselves, and thanks for watching. See you later.